I'm Pippa Smart, Editor-in-Chief of Learned Publishing, the journal of the Association of Learned and Professional Society Publishers, published in association with the Society of Scholarly Publishers. I'm here with Letty Conrad, our North American editor, to think back on the last 30 years of scholarly publishing, what the journal's been doing, what scholarly publishing has been doing, and where we think the future is going. The journal was originally born as the Bulletin, which was launched shortly after the formation of ALPSP in 1972. But in 1988, it changed into Learned Publishing, signifying a change in the way that the journal was produced, the type of content it wanted to include, and the type of perspectives that it wanted to provide for the scholarly publishing industry. So now we're 30 years down the line, and it's a perfect opportunity to look at where we've come from and where we're going and to evaluate what the future holds for us. Hi everybody, I'm Letty Conrad, North American Editor for Learned Publishing. I'm so pleased to be serving our global publishing community in this post at our 30 year anniversary. And at this time, Pippa, I'm curious, as you look back, what do you see as the biggest change or changes in our community in these last 30 years? Now, as you know, my experience spans the whole 30 years of learned publishing. And it's really interesting to look back on the early years when I started in publishing and where we are now, and also to look at what learned publishing was publishing. Now, the journal model is still a good model. I'd still defend it as a good vehicle for research communication. But one really interesting change is that whereas 30 years ago in the journal and also within the publishers themselves, there was a tradition of defending the traditional model, of supporting it and saying it shouldn't be challenged, to a complete sea change now where people feel that we should be challenging the model, we should be asking what more can we do, what can we do that's different and the journal has really reflected this. 30 years ago, if you look at the articles, they were really defending the model, defending subscription price increases, defending the standard traditional peer review, the standard quality assurance. Whereas now, our industry updates are reporting on increasing innovation, changes and improvements, hopefully, to the scholarly model. And I think this is probably the biggest change Things like open access are mere facets of the overarching challenging of what we're doing and how we are best supporting the research communication. So how does this chime in with your ideas, Letty? Yes, that's a good point. I do think that the number of pieces that are advocating for new directions and exploring new models um, are on the rise. And I think this in part means that our journal is serving its intended purpose to provide a open, trustworthy platform for this kind of dialogue, for debating future directions and um, understanding the revolutions that are going on in the industry. Um, I think we have, it's kind of funny, we have sort of the added benefit of uh, playing with some of those changes and innovations ourselves in the act of publishing the journal. So it's a bit of a meta process sometimes, um, it, much like this video editorial is sort of playing with new modes of communication. Uh, it's a good example. Um, but I think it's important that we not get distracted by every new shiny thing um, and every new passing fancy, um, that we keep in mind where changes best suit our mission and uh, best focus our work in advancing academic communications um, and academic publishing as a key function of scholarship. Um, I I'm curious what you think, Peppa. Yes, you make a great point about the bright, shiny new things and the temptation to get swept along by all of the new innovations and modifications that are taking place. And there's so much noise in the environment, it becomes increasingly important that decisions are based on evidence rather than being based on hearsay or perhaps on gossip. 
and therefore the position of the journal is to ensure that when we're publishing we're ensuring the validation and the good arguments and the resources and references that support what we're publishing to ensure that we're providing a credible resource for anybody that's reading. Now that's not to say we shouldn't be shaking things up a little and I think there is also a place for us to publish contentious articles that raise um, argumentative, perhaps, topics, things that get people talking and get people discussing, again, so long as they're well substantiated. For example, in 2017, we published Toby Green's article on gold and green open access, in which he argued that neither model is sustainable in the long term. That caused a lot of discussion on the airwaves. Equally, in 2018, we published Kurt's article on why authors deliberately, or perhaps naively, decide to publish in poor quality journals and to release their research in journals that are not, within the Western research environment, considered valuable sources of information. Again, it caused a lot of discussion on the airwaves and also brought people into the discussion that may not have participated in other entries and discussions taking place on blog sites. So I think there is a role for us there. And there are so many topics coming up. I think it's important for us to ensure that we are reflecting what's going on within the industry. And within this area, for me, the hot topic for the foreseeable future is going to be on trust and reliability. Not only how we validate what we publish as a publishing industry, but also how we ensure that researchers know what to trust and who to trust, and that they are using good quality research to underpin their future investigations and their future research. And I think trust is such a big issue now in the global research environment that it's an important area for us to ensure we're covering within the journal. That's my opinion of where I think the future hot topics are going to focus. But what about you, Letty? What are your opinions for what topics are going to be emerging and which we should be covering in the near future? Gosh, yes, you're right. There are so many hot topics uh, these days. Top of my mind would be uh, continuing to regularly address the cost-benefit relationships to technological advancements, um, to understand and debate their place in our work. Um, for instance, the develop, development of artificial intelligence and neural networks. Uh, I think it's important that we regularly ask, where do they best serve our purpose? Uh, and where um, can they accelerate scientific communications uh, without disregarding the singular work, the singular benefits um, of human cognition? Um, so that balance, making that balance between the machine mind and the human mind, um, I think will be a key issue for the journal and for the community to continue to focus on. Um, I think we should continue to lead by doing, um, to openly support dialogue and disagreements while keeping an eye on our legacy, while keeping an eye on the big picture, uh, and not sort of, again, chasing um, every shiny thing down a rabbit hole. Um, the journal has, over these last 30 years, really elevated the discussions in our community uh, in a peer-reviewed uh, format that we can all trust. Um, um, where diverse voices are welcomed and celebrated, where um, differences of opinion can be aired and shared without, um, without retribution. Um, I have always really admired how ALPS and SSP together have um, promoted the journal and allowed it to be an unfettered uh, forum for conversation. Um, these organizations have not um, uh, come to the journal with a singular sort of agenda or a monolithic mind frame. Um, I think this is more important now than ever as we look ahead to the next 30 years. Absolutely, because like you, I welcome all perspectives, all types of research, regardless of their perspective or their opinions, so long as they're methodologically correct, well argued and also well substantiated and can make it through our quality control procedures. The journal has a duty to 
promote debate and to influence change. But most importantly, we should be providing quality information that people can rely on when they're making decisions. We've been doing it for 30 years and I anticipate and hope that we'll still be doing it in 30 years time. It's a big time of change at the moment and I'm really excited to be a part of that.